Well, the uh, Oxford Union <clears throat> actually came about because I was doing something called the Jerry Sadovich Show, who's a comedian, and he used to stand on stage and just call people up, and because all the cameras was on, everyone would get shy. And he'd say, well, you've got two minutes to talk about anything you want. And he'd go, come on, fatty, you silly ginger bastard. Come on, and where you normally eat him, you can't because the cat. And he's going, oh, look, idiot. And, you know, and, he was, and I used to stand behind him as the bouncer on the programme. You know, just stand there as, 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 as a, an ornament, really. And he used to just be rude to these people. And he'd go, oh, get off, you've got nothing to say. And call out the next one. So um, he, he, I was doing a show like that. And uh, on this occasion, it was up in Liverpool, and a scouser gets in, comes up on stage, and before anyone can say anything, he turns around to Jerry Sadovich and he goes, how comes a wanker like you gets his own TV show? And he didn't know what to say, this Jerry Sadovich, so he looked at me, and he goes, he looked at me and he goes, what are you looking at him for? He said, a fucking silly bastard, you know, so, I didn't know what to do, and I thought, I can't really eat him because I'm on telly, and I thought, no, that's what they're all doing, they're not answering back to so I grabbed him and gave him a whack, and then um, I actually got arrested for that, actually, they come back and turned, he left and went up to the police station, and uh, told them what happened, and um, they come down and nicked me off the, what, all on film, turned all the lights on, and nicked me off the stage, and someone at that show was worked at the Oxford Union. And he came up to me and he said, do you do audience whips? And I went, yeah. He said, well, could you do a, a, a lecture at the Oxford Union for me? He said, I'm the, libra the librarian or the bloke who arranged it. I thought, fucking hell, yeah, I'd love to. So I then gets down to do the Oxford Union, which was most probably one of the proudest days of my life. It was the first time I'd ever seen my mum proud of me. Yeah, you know, your mates are proud of you if you get away with a court case or you do this or got away with another robbery, ma'am. You know, I've never seen her proud of me, but uh, the Oxford Union thing really done it for me, bro. and for me as well. And the man that was taking the pictures at the time was a man called Jocelyn Bain Hogg, who, was, who lived with me more or less for about 18 months, just taking thousands of photographs, and he made a book called The Firm. Uh, um, and it's just a photographic book of me and all of all my friends and everyone that's come in and over the course of 18 months every uh, naughty man of notoriety have been in my house you know in in that 18 months there was one of the great funerals so he's, he's, he's got all of that so in this book there is a photograph of me um, an aerial photograph that Jocelyn took from um, from the balcony addressing the Oxford Union I'm sitting on the corner of a table with a bust of my head behind me and that. And um, it's a cool picture, it's a cool picture, but when the book got brought out, Jay-Z actually thought that was a really cool picture because he's an intelligent man, Jay-Z. And he actually looked at it as, wow, there's a convicted felon, right, teaching future parliament how to behave. He's the lecturer in the Oxford Union teaching the next Lord Mayor, Prime Minister, Chief of Police are getting tuitioned by Dave Courtney. And he thought that was really, really funny. So what he'd done is, he'd done the exact same picture and put his head on it, yeah? And put it on the cover of Blueprint, his album, Blueprint, which is a fucking good album, yeah? You know, the, the wording in it is, is it's cool, it's a cool album. And he, so he's just changed the head on the picture and put him on it and called it Blueprint. Yeah, it's like a little swap of a picture. And um, so my, my photograph became really famous on the cover of Jay-Z's album. I don't think it's the last you're going to hear it. I think that's going to raise his head again because right now he's running around with his 20th year in, in show business and saying he's done it all down to himself. And he's, you know... <laughs> Yeah, he actually started off with me on the front of his fucking cover, to be honest. And that's how I ended up doing the Oxford Union and my picture being the one that Joe E picked for his album cover. And um, it hasn't gone unnoticed by a lot of people and, and Big Nasty, a good friend of mine, um, a grime artist, 
has, has took an interest in that Vogart and his management team. <clears throat> and I think there's going to be a little um, revival of it, you know. I don't, I don't know what they're going to do, but they're, they're, not, they're very interested in it and they're going to do something with it. So I think it's going to make a, a, a comeback, that picture. It was refreshing for me to do an, an audience with in front of um, a bunch of very intelligent people. Right? Not, not that my normal clientele ain't, but that my normal clientele was not of the same uh, standard of brain power as the people who were talking to me. And their questions were like that. I know, you know, they, was, they were very, um, you know, I, I actually said at one stage, I actually said at one stage, once I've justified it in my head, when I'm doing a, a, a rent a clump in someone or debt collecting, it's very easy for me to put my Robin Hood hat on because Mr. A has nicked half a million quid off Mr. B. I am just getting it back, right? And what methods I use might be against the law, but I, I can easily put my Robin Hood hat on because I'm getting it back off you. You nicked it and giving it back to the bloke you nicked it off. Yeah, so um, once I've justified it in my own head, there is, there is no going back with it. I'm going to win it. Yeah, and he said, but you've, you've, you've um, killed someone. He said, how do you justify that? I said, well, I would like anyone in this hall, anyone in this room, to tell me they would have done something different. My only crime was on that day, is that I had a thing in my pocket, right? I had a thing that down my trousers, and as the man that I was there supposed to be looking after was shot, I'd never seen a dead body before, not one dying, I was 20-something, right? And as he went on the floor, I turned round and he was pointing a gun at me, shutting one eye, and I thought, I'm going to get it. And I'm not the best shot in the world, I'm a shit shot. I've never won anything at the fair, right? And I just pulled it out and flicked it. I didn't have time to go like that back. I went, bang, it got him. And I went out of there like Daly Thompson, yeah? <laughs> Quick, and got away. So if, if there is anyone in this room that would like to stand up and say to me, well, I wouldn't have shot back, because it's against the law and would have died, right? I will show you a fucking idiot. I said, and none of you look like idiots to me. So stand up the person who wouldn't have done what I done. And no one stood up. And that was my that was my best comment of the night. <laughs>